Well, welcome to this year's uh, Deer Expo. In the last couple of years, I've done the cooking show. And this year, we're doing something special. We're bringing in my friend, Rob Phelps. Rob Phelps has got his degree in culinary arts. He was a chef and has probably been cooking his whole life. So anyway, he's going to be with us today to uh, teach us how to make bratwurst. Rob, come on in. Thanks, Larry. Hi. As you know, I'm Rob Phelps. Um, today we're going to be making a fresh German style bratwurst. It's um, basically with your venison that you know you usually use the back straps and the roast sit in the freezer for a couple of years and you either want to can them or get them, send them in to get stuff made. And it's expensive. So with little or you know, little cost to you, we can make your own and have you know something that you made yourself and it's simple it's fairly economical the um, basic equipment so you got a couple stainless steel pans a decent sized grinder half horse or better which is preferable and a stuffer vertical stuffer which is a good uh, essential thing to have I started out with a old style horn one that just doesn't fit the bill. Um, these will run you a little over a hundred bucks. This is probably your most expensive. It's you can spend between two and a half. You can get them on sale 150, 200 bucks. Um, your pans are minimal. Just make sure that they are stainless steel. Um, basically, we'll get started. Start out. Let me grab the meat out of the cooler. Make sure everything stays cold. You want everything to be super cold. I have a minimum amount of meat. So for this this aspect, we don't really need. I usually wrap a ice pack. This is where all your heat gets generated. Just put ice pack on there with some tape. It'll stay cold for as long as you, I made as many as over 50 pounds of constant grinding and it stays cold. Um, one thing I want to stress, if you want good sausage, use good quality, clean scraps, venison scraps. Use a, get a fatty pork I usually use for brats. Um, a good fatty cut of pork, like a, I use prepackaged pork loin ends that they've trimmed and they package, they come in like five pound packages. It's it's a good mixture as you can see this is the I've already ground it once for time saving purposes but um, you got a good amount of marbling in there a good amount of pat to, it's usually about a 50 50 ratio I use for brats because um, venison is very lean and it, it will dry out very quickly so we'll get started what I'm gonna do is I'll open this up. We're going to double grind this. Just to make sure it's mixed up fairly, fairly decent. Try to use your utensils as much as you can because this is a grinder. It grinds. It doesn't care if it's fingers or knives or whatever. Use the proper tool. That's my little safety tip. The um, like I say, this your grinders are what really take the time. But if you get a good one that doesn't plug up and is strong enough to to do your meat, it is an essential part of it. Time is your kind of your enemy when it's time and temperature. You have to um, keep that at a minimum. 
once we get this ground up, then we can go on to our fun part with the stuffing. Why I want to double grind this is, as you can see, if, if you can get a shot of this, the texture of the meat now, how it looks compared to what it is in the bag. I use a fine, um, a fine plate. I don't use the coarse. The coarse plate just kind of, you don't get the mouth feel as I call it, because you want to bite into a sa your sausage, it, um, you don't get chunks of each one, it's all m melded together. It saves on your mixing, and it basically this actually mixes your fat together with the your lean venison a lot better, and it you get a better, cons more consistent product out of it. A lot of trial and error. Um, once you get going in this, it's kind of a, if you like to do it, which I do, it's, it's habit. <laughs> you can go to try your own, basically your, you're at your own discretion as to what you want to put in. I mean, you could use veal, you could use lamb, um, basically for sausages, I've even made, I don't want to say it, or I'll get kicked out of Wisconsin, but I've made chicken brats, and they are really good, but um, for this, uh, for your demonstration purposes, we're doing venison, but like I say, for what you have and the cost of processing, and I know the myth of where you take your deer, you either get you get your own deer back, whatever, but you're not going to get 80 pounds of sausage out of a 100-pound deer. Um, you control, basically what I like the best about is you control your environment right here. You control what's in it. My seasonings don't have any, uh, for this has fresh brought, no preservatives, no nitrates, nitrites, MSG, all the good things that are bad for you. Um, there isn't any, even any added sugar. A lot of people put sweeteners and dry milk powder and all kinds of stuff and into sausages fill it. Um, and it is kind of fun. Alright, now we're almost we're almost done with the grinding process. So then we'll get on to moving on to our stuffer. One thing I want to add to that is when you get your um, casings these are uh, regular hog, um, hog casings natural natural casings they'll come they'll come um, packaged in you know sort of dried and packed in salt really good you want to at least let them let them soak for at least 24 hours and change the water as much as you can like if you can change it every four hours is great. Um, and what I do is I'll uh, I'll take and I, I take each individual one out and put it on the over your sink faucet and then rinse them out the insides as well at least two three times. I know it's a it's a kind of a longer process, but you get a lot better. You don't get the saltiness out. Of, it takes the salt out of the casings, and it um, you get a lot. You know you don't want to taste the casing. You want to taste the broth. 
So um, I found that, that that really helps in prepping, which I have these right here already pre-done. Because that's, that's a time-consuming step. Basically, it's just like when you used to fill water balloons when you were a kid. And sometimes they break. And you make a mess in the kitchen and your wife yells at you. But she gets over it. <laughs> okay, we're almost done with grinding. Which is good. You will have a little bit left in here. I, I don't mess with it. Some people use bread to go down in there, but for the little bit, the half a cup of meat that you have in here, or even a quarter cup, I really don't don't mess around with it. I just clean it up. Gotcha. Because it's sat in there for that long and I don't want to. You want to have a good fresh product. Basically, I use um, like six tablespoons of salt, six tablespoons of pepper, equal parts, um, tablespoon of mace, and a small container, which is about half a cup, I think, of pickling spice, and I grind it. I use my wife's coffee grinder, but I washed it out, but don't tell her. <laughs> it works very good. Um, we're just going to mix all this in. I may not have to use all of it. Just kind of play around and see how well it mixes in. You don't want to add too much. Basically what I'm doing, I can show you, is I'm just mixing all the seasonings in real well. And another trick I use to make sure that it all mixes in well is water. You add, it's kind of not an exact process, but you add enough water to make, because this will get really sticky. Um, and it doesn't go through your, it, it doesn't go through your stuffer as well. It mixes the seasonings in fairly well too. Um, make sure this is important. It's basically if you don't want to get a big bite of seasoning in your when you bite into it, but you want enough so it's even. Just consistency is all it is. And so you just keep make sure there's no big clumps everywhere. As you can see, I might add some more water, just so there. See how that's pretty good consistency right there. So now we're ready for. The sausage part. This is a five pound stuffer. It um, basically one of your smaller versions of vertical they make up to big commercial ones that are electric and stuff but for your home use this is usually all I all you need basically one thing you want to do is right here is a gasket. You want to here it is. Sorry. I just use Crisco food grade grease. Take a little on there, make sure this is it doesn't impart any flavors or anything, but I use this in the grinder as well, just to save on uh friction of the blade and the and the auger to not create heat and it, it doesn't wreck your grinder. Um, just fill this in 
like so. Pack it in there good. Turn it like this. There's a little air relief thing on here that it will tell you once it gets packed down enough. You want to get most of the air out before you put on the casings just because they will puff up and the less air See how it's coming out right now, then you want to stop. So, we'll put our gloves on. We are kind of, it's one thing you can't use tools when you're doing this, you have to feel with your hands. So, let's throw some gloves on. All these come out just like that and just like making water balloons when you're a kid you know. so what we'll do is just for the sake of our time you don't want to sit and watch this all day We're going to do this. Take this and just tie it off because you're going to cut this off. Trim this up anyway just for the so you have an end to work with. Just make a standard overhand knot. And we're ready to go. Alright, so now just kind of slowly Crank this down as you can see this will puff up, but you just sort of slowly make sure you want to hold back a little bit to get your size right. You got a little tear right there, but it'll be right. You don't want to overstuff them, but you don't want to have a understuff on either. But that consistency is right, and pull it a little bit if you need to. The trick is not to get um, air bubbles in it because that's when you cook it that's when they'll pop um, and then you'll have split split brats all over the place and you don't want that as you can see I'm trying to work this handle you know to keep the constant flow of the meat through the tube. Um, basically that way you keep you keep your sausage the way and I'm holding back just enough. It's kind of a trick. Um, you just kind of kind of feel get used to what you know how it works. There's another hole. And when you when you get to that point always go backwards on your stuffer so it'll stop up here. One thing about the, the casings, you can, like, if you get out too many, just dry them off real good with a paper towel and just use regular non iodized salt. I usually use coarse salt. Salt them again, put them in a bag, put them in the refrigerator. They'll last for months in there, just like that. Make sure you get most of the water out and um, do that. Um, they'll last for quite some time. Um, basically, if you get them out and want to reuse them, rinse them really good again. Get all the salt out, change your water in them. Um, and of course, like anything, if they smell bad, then don't use them. They're cheap. But, Okay. We had some technical difficulties with our our uh, casings. 
And if you do have trouble, like you saw me struggling with uh, putting those on the on the tube, I took them over to the sink and refill, re-rinsed them again, and they slid on very nicely. So if you have that trouble, just take take them and 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 re-rinse them. You know, run some water through them again because they've sat in water, but really not a lot has gotten into the. You know, I've rinsed them out four times already, but they still kind of get sticky in there so get a lot better cooperation out of them if you just keep them cold and wet and now it's you'll have a lot less tears a lot less air bubbles and a lot less frustration with your with your stuffing operation if you just this little things that you can do like I say play around with your seasonings once you get the basic system down, it's, you know, you can do, like this was probably 10, 12 pounds of meat. Do little batches at a time and play around with it. That way you got different, you know, you can have different flavors or whatever. Some people in your family like smoked ones. Try that. You can do them on the grill. And, you can add cheese to them. Um, you can add, you know, spice them up. Throw some jalapenos or red peppers or make Italian sausages. You know, basically the possibilities are endless. It's all in what you want to add to them. You're the creator. Um, make, uh, have fun with it. Try to make it a family event. <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't work with good in my house, but. It's fun. So we're all done gri uh, grinding, stuffing, stuffing them into sausage links like this. And Larry, you want to come in and yeah, help I me? Can, uh, I can help you there, Ralph. Link these up. Mm -hmm. Basically, you, you start about right here. You find the knot on the end. Okay. And that's where you start. Your average size brat. Give it a pinch. Okay. And give it a twist. And don't twist it too hard, maybe a couple times. Go down, try to work it down a little bit. If you get, okay, it's a feel you. thing. If you think you got too much in there, you just don't want them to blow up. Um, I'm going to try to just make two out of here. And then, know. like you get to the end, maybe we'll make some foot longs. So there's no exact science to it. They're yours. Make them as big as you want. Now, with the cooking process, because of time constraints, we're not gonna we're not gonna cook them. We're in Wisconsin. If you don't know how to cook a brat, you can move south. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a <valid> joke. <laughs> I'm laughing. Larry thinks it's funny. <laughs> um, but do whatever you want. I like to smoke them, grill them. You know, Larry. The big debate is: Do we boil first or after? I don't care. <laughs> they all taste the same. Just make sure that, you know that you you twist them enough, and then once you um, to link them, you you twist them and you pull them apart, and you take scissors and when you're or you can cook them like this all at once, or and then you, when you want to grill them, just cut them. Um, whatever you want to do. One thing I like to do. That I want to allude to is um, when I do mix the seasonings. This is a fresh sausage, but sometimes I, I like to let it sit for a little while after I mix it. Um, overnight is fine, but you don't have to. I mean, it's it's being it's a fresh sausage, you can do it what you want. Um, just play around with it if you if you really there. I split one, but. That happens. That's about it. Um, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it, so I like the the way the process of it. You know, you're in control of everything right here. You control the where the meat goes, or all the meat is cared for. Um, what type of seasonings you want, and for a couple hours you've got quite a bit of 
a good a good Saturday grill out session for you and your family and friends and and stuff to try things. There you go. Well, thank you, Rob. I have called him many, many times for help when I'm cooking, and he's always come through, and you've come through again. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're for welcome. Turning Thanks us for on to me. the art of uh, sausage making. <laughs>